Okay. All right, welcome to a very special edition of Risque Business News. This is like our fucking Super Bowl, you guys. We are so excited to go through it today. I am your host, Laura Sogar. And I'm Mae Planner. And we are two stand-up comics in New York City. Uh, I would imagine there's going to be some people hopefully listening to this that <laughs> don't know who the fuck we are. Just to preface all this, we don't, we're don't. we not financial experts. Uh, we read the same articles that you assholes do. Um, we go on stage and make jokes when we're allowed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I feel like I learned the stock market this week with the whole GameStop thing. So A hundred percent. And point being, our, our normal thing is to cover, you know, juicy business news stories. So when this all started to happen, we were like, I mean, this is it. This is yeah. juicy business news story. <laughs> this is it. So we're doing a special episode just on GameStop and Reddit and hedge funds and the stock market. So just like pretty chill, light topics, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like easy breezy. This has been like really eye opening for me, though, because I've so been that girl in my life that I'm like, or like in the world that's like, oh, like, you know, math. I don't fucking get it. And it's like, <laughs> all right, May. Well, you're an adult now. So let's learn how yeah. to like be financially savvy. And like, let's learn how other people are making money. And this is such an interesting, like disruptive time in the market, obviously. Huge. Um, so, you know. We might be speaking out of turn because we just learned a lot of this stuff. Yeah. But um, let us know. Yeah. Fucking yeah. roast us. Like, you know what? Totally. It's fine. Let's... I also want to go on record to say that I got surgery two days ago. <laughs> and so I am on Percocet. So if I sound like an idiot, it's probably because I'm an idiot. But it could also be because I am high. Yeah. So... <laughs> and I have no excuse. Uh, I had a couple drinks last night. <laughs> So go and, you know, do that as you will, but otherwise completely on top of it. And, um, do I know much about the stock market? I know, I would say above average, you know, much more than I do. Yeah. I would. Well, I mean, (laughs) I'm like, well, (laughs) no, no, no. To be fair, like I, my dad is just a, he like day trades all he's day traded his entire life. And, (laughs) um, I, as a result have like, kind of absorbed some stuff from him. He's forever okay. trying to teach me about it. And I have a decent amount invested. Um, really? But mostly, yeah. yeah. I, uh, Should well, I, I just mean, copy your investments? Or sure. like, how's that work? No, that's 100%. <laughs> like, I'm become, that's, I think, illegal for me to, cons- to give is you it? financial Is advice. A, I'm not a financial advisor. I mean, definitely, obvious, clearly fucking not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> However, we are going to talk a lot about stocks today and uh, kind of the, the drama around it. If you want our resources or like what we're quoting, like just want to let you know, we're not breaking any stories. These are available elsewhere and happy to send that shit to you. Um, we'll link being, it also. Don't sue us. I yeah. don't know if that's even a possibility. I don't think we'll get sued. Listen, we're just talking. We're just talking. We're just Listen talking. Listen opinions. We'll... <laughs> eh, fuck it. And uh, we will... Def- this is probably going to be part one because as we're going to talk about, there is... This is... It's been what? Like a week that the, yeah. the real drama has been underway. This has been going on for like close to a year and a half or so now. But point being, there's going to be significant, probably within the next week, significant advancements on this story. Yeah, I think that what we should do is just release our regular episodes and then also have this as like an ongoing thread because love it. You know, give people some updates on the GameStop love it. situation. It's also winter and I'm so goddamn bored. So Yeah. <laughs> this is perfect. Let's go on a yeah, ride. Comedy is pretty much at a halt right now. So. so before we dive deeper into this, we're gonna do like a high level overview yeah. on just the story as a whole, so you kind of know the direction that we're gonna go. And then once we get into the details, I'm gonna ask all the stupid questions that you might be thinking at home but are afraid to ask ask people because I definitely am afraid to ask people some questions. I know where you're just like you're at a party and you're like options <laughs> yeah I think those are money <laughs> I think I read like what is a short like 50 times and I was like where's the money I don't, I don't understand how you make money Hold on. from that though plus minus yeah <laughs> imaginary <laughs> I do I do have questions around that though but I'll let you explain everything and okay <laughs> perfect so okay so the high level version of this is um, GameStop is, we know them, we love them. They, gaming company, like they sell physical discs. Um, they were being shorted by the market. I'll explain what that means in more detail, but basically the market was like, they fucking suck. They're going to yeah. go down. We think we're going to bet on the fact that they're going to go down. There's a way for them to make money off that. I cannot believe they're still in business, quite frankly. I know. Well, we'll dig into that. But point being, yeah, GameStop, mixed, mixed reviews. Market thinks they're going to not do well. 
And um, meanwhile, there's a group called Wall Street Bets, which is a Reddit group, and they are basically powered by the fact that there's commission-free trading now through apps like Robinhood, which are, you know, Acorn. Acorn. There's a number of different ones that allow this now, which we'll dig into in more detail. But point being, they used, um, they were on the assumption that GameStop was going to do well, mostly driven by the fact that deep fucking value, our king is um had a really good argument around that and i will i'm obsessed with this deep fucking value is a reddit user yes thank you for the context i know him as my king (laughs) (laughs) he's the best laura texted me last night and she goes um side note i want to fuck deep deep fucking value i was like what's happening it's incredibly sexy what he's doing very hot extremely extremely hot i am in a relationship but i'm just like how much do i love matthew it's a lot but i'm just saying if i were single deep fucking value my boy Uh, I love you. Um, But anyway, so he helped kind of lead us all in investing a ton in GameStop, which drove the price up a ton and really put the hedge funds in a lot of trouble. And they are um, needed to be bailed out by other hedge funds. And then Robinhood pulled GameStop from being able to be traded on his platform, which is illegal, maybe. Yeah. And that's the synopsis. Obviously, can you go into more? Whoa. Can you go into more detail about specifically why the um, what do you call it, brokers were in trouble, or like the what is it called? I the can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let's 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 back up a little bit and talk about. First of all, I'm going to talk about like, you know, let GameStop as a whole. So GameStop, the reason, and you're kind of nailing it. It's a mall, you know, retailer. <laughs> When's the last time you've been to a, a GameStop, a right. mall? Like, you know, you're not going to them very frequently. It's like a blockbuster. It's a, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a blockbuster. They literally, they like give you like physical discs. <laughs> you know what I mean? And Are there even computers that take physical discs anymore? No, I don't think so. There are though, ironically, and I'll go into this in more detail, a lot of the, the gaming platforms still use physical discs. Okay. A combination. Huh. So it kind of depends. So we'll, we'll talk about that in more detail when we talk about deep fucking oh, value. Like- like a PS yeah, 95 the, or whatever the fuck they're called. What are they called? <laughs> the Xbox, P- yeah. PS5, or PS... I have the PS4. Oh, um, you do? Why? Yeah. You play I, video oh, games? I, yes. Oh, really? Oh my god, I didn't know <laughs> Not that. very frequently. I don't have a ton of time for it, but Breath of the Wild. I like... I have like niche games that I just okay. like to play, and I'm not like a big, you know, online gamer or anything like that, yeah. but I played Skyrim, I played Breath of the Wild, um frequently do mario like you know drunk driving where we're oh, okay. mario kart with that That'd be oh fun. it's yeah. very fun we'll we'll play it sometime um smash etc so so i have i i dabble i used to be into gaming when i was younger mm-hmm. but obviously at this point well now i'm bored again so i've yeah, actually yeah, just restarted <laughs> i'll come over we'll play mario kart perfect sounds that great. sounds so much fun <laughs> um but anyway so that's the reason that they thought that gamestop wasn't gonna do well and the hedge funds were... <laughs> pretty fucking reasonable. Yeah, pretty... It's not, like, unreal to be like, oh, yeah, yeah I don't know if they're going to they're gonna crush. Um, a quick background. If you don't know what a hedge fund is, and I think yeah. by and large people kind of have an idea, but essentially it's like they're, they're investment groups that are, you know, taking money from, like, things like pension funds will be put into hedge oh. funds, which is kind of a little important. Yeah, yeah. Um, that seems hmm. yeah i know um corporations foundations endowments and then most notably high net worth individuals okay so rich assholes not only assholes there's some nice rich people but just for the sake of the story we're gonna focus on the assholes because sure. it's a lot more fun it's way more fun it's way more fun and people love to hate rich people exactly so let's just indulge that <laughs> so they basically are um instead of going into more traditional you know investment styles or whatever like more like safe ones yeah hedge funds are known for using like fairly aggressive tactics okay they will do things like what are the list of them um oh god whatever point being it's basically like you know you could either take a very safe route like if if you were like getting in an uber or something and you're like in a normal uber that's going to drive and follow all the rules and it's going to get you there in 20 minutes or you get in a crazy ass cab and they like switch lanes during intersections and are speeding and doing like Super aggressive, super risky stuff. Yeah. Where you're like, I'm either going to fucking die <laughs> or I'm going to get there 10 minutes early. Okay. That's a really great analogy. I Thank like you. I, yeah. I thought of that and I was like, That's, that, that feels right. And it yeah. might not be, but fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> the Makes other, sense to me. 
Great. The other super important thing about this is um, that kind of made this all possible was um, the market and the way that people are investing has changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So back like 10 years ago or so, when you were trying to do a trade online, there would be like commission or a fee associated with a, a completing like a trade. Like you had to go through a hedge fund. You had to go through. Not necessarily. It was more through like these brokerages. Okay. Like if you, if I was on Fidelity, for instance, yeah, yeah. and um, I tried to do a trade, they would charge me, I don't, let's call it a dollar or something okay. like that to complete a trade. Yeah. So um, that's fine. But then all of a sudden my, my cost is like I'm buying this stock plus a buck. Yeah. So unless I'm doing larger sums where the dollar kind of like dilutes down doesn't really matter because the the percentages will will eclipse that quickly um it just makes it to where those fees will uh have folks who are doing smaller amounts not really enter the market because that's yeah. you know a dollar if that's if you're investing 100 bucks and you it's a dollar each time obviously that's gonna you know so essentially they were like capping off the market to only people of a certain wealth bracket um in practice, not that they meant to do that necessarily. I will say just back then. I feel like well, they probably meant to do that, honestly. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, I don't know. You know, chicken or the egg kind okay. of story. Okay. You know I mean? Point being though, obviously these brokerages, like they need to, they need to make money, right? So they need to have money inflow at some point. Like yeah. they don't, they're not volunteering. This isn't a nonprofit. It's not a nonprofit. <laughs> By any means. However, so in comes Robin Hood. And like, just like its name suggests, like they were obviously heavily leaning on the fact that they were like servicing, stealing from the rich, serving, giving to the poor, blah, yeah. blah, blah. The whole concept behind it was there was no commission trading. There was no fees associated with doing a trade. It launched in and 20- And there was no limits, right? Like you could, you could- Right. Okay. Right. Uh, not that I'm aware of. I'm not 100% on that, but yeah. I don't think there's- Basically, it was just like- you can use this, you could trade, and we're going to make our money in other ways. We're not going to charge you to do your trades. Okay. Which I'll go into how they actually make money in a yeah, second. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, about that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's um, coming up. Okay, <laughs> this. okay. It's, a, it's a key point. So they launched in 2013. Um, they are now a $5.6 billion company. They had rumored that they were going to go public this year. Okay. Um, so they're crushing, point being. And they have 6 million users in 2019 was reported. Which is still actually pretty low. Yeah, I, I thought it would be too. higher than that. Yeah. But like people are dumb. Yeah, they are dumb and they also don't invest, i.e. me. Yeah. I should have had a Robin Hood. Yeah. Well, or the other side of it is, so the nice thing is just, this is a tangent, but um, because of what they did in 2013, obviously users were adopting this because they were like, hell yeah, I don't yeah. want to pay a fee. That sounds great. And yeah. as a result, a lot of other trading platforms have done the same thing. And mm -hmm. they've also gotten rid of commissions on, you know, trades and stuff like that. Like, you know, Fidelity has it. There's a lot of, uh, I think TD Ameritrade, like you can go online and easily look up like no commission or, n you know, no fees trading platforms. And there's a number of them. Acorn, you, met or, you mentioned, um, okay. like what is, a couple of them. Point being, yeah, yeah. it exists, but they kind of like force <laughs> the market to do it. I think there's one and I wish I remember the name. I could look it up, but I, I think there's one that's like specifically for women. And I'm like, how condescending is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, pink, you know, like, oh my like God, pink that lettering. makes me it's so like, sad. Yeah, it's like finance <laughs> that even a dumb woman brain can understand. And I'm like, We Great. covered it in shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm like, sign me up. <laughs> I'm like, if they can tell me like how many but pairs of pants be, I can buy. It's going to be some bullshit where it's like, well, this woman owned company. And I'm like, I don't fucking yeah, care. Don't I don't give a shit. I'm trying to make money. I want a profitable company. Like, profitable company. If they're and owned if by a woman, well, fantastic. But That's awesome. But I'm not like going to assume risk because of that, yeah. which is like so condescending that you would assume I'd be into totally it. it's not like it's not like I'm in the store being like do I want to buy this vodka or this vodka and it's woman owned fine I don't right. fucking care between the two sure but with investments I'm trying to maximize my profit yeah pretty much hard stop and unless there's like weird moral shit involved which yeah. being woman owned is not for me right then that's pretty much it okay anyway <laughs> so minor uh, swerve and we're back <laughs> yeah Anyway, so user adoption was strong, um, and mostly their investors were younger investors with smaller portfolios, um, which is fine, except for this is obviously a pretty big market for the rest of, you know, people want to attract those kind of people because they grow and they yeah. eventually hopefully get older and have more money. So you want to get them early in their investment um, lifestyle. Yeah. So uh, the other ones all focus on people with like 100K plus invested for the most part. Cool. Um 
how they make money. I'm going to use my notes on this because it's kind of complicated. So basically, Robin Hood makes money by sending their orders. Like if I say I want to buy AMC, a share of AMC, I do that and they fulfill it. But they remember when you have stocks for a company, it's like think of it as almost physical stocks. Like yeah. they have 700 shares outstanding. I'm making it or let's do 100 shares outstanding. I want to buy one. You have one. We need to get linked up. I don't know you. <laughs> I don't okay. know who owns the stock, but we both use, you know, this money market where that, that transaction can be fulfilled. Does that make sense? Um, so who are you buying it from? The company itself? You are essentially asking this broker to go handle it. Go get it. Okay. Go get her. Like, you mm. know, go get that other stock. Okay. And they go to things like these money markets where they will um, be able to fulfill these trades. Okay. And part of this is this, this is something that we'll definitely circle back on in part two, because I have a lot more learning to do on this. And it's also a hugely important part in I think the impending lawsuits that are coming, <laughs> but these market makers, excuse me, are the ones who, um, they will do large volumes of this and they'll offer volume discounts essentially mm-hmm. to groups like Robin hood or whoever's like going to the brokers and Robin hood pockets that, um, the discount level. Okay, cool. So that's kind of how they're making their money. They also sell data to different organizations like these money, uh, this market makers. Oh, that's, um, that's, hmm. yeah. You probably agree to it in the terms and, you know, conditions, blah, blah, blah. Um, This is also a controversial practice, this market thing, because uh, that technically becomes its own private market. That's like the public can't access. Okay. Um, But these guys are getting a discount for being able to go onto there. Interesting. (sighs) You know what? I don't have, I don't know enough about it to have an educated opinion. All I know is. I feel like we need like a chart. Like I need like a graph of like the money moves here to this person. This part, I know. Maybe eventually we'll be at the point where we can do graphics, but not today. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, that, yeah. So anyway, there's some fun, point being, there's funky stuff on the back end that involves big players like this that Mm -hmm. allows Robin Hood to make money, but they're obviously in trend, like they're completely tied in with these market makers. Yes. They're. That's how, that's who's paying them at the end of the day. Okay. Um, media perception around Robin Hood tra- traders was, like, we talked about things are mostly young investors. And honestly, it's been really weird to me, the amount of like kind of shitting on these, like, yeah, it's so New York times is the company has drawn, drawn in millions of young investors who had never traded before by offering no fee trading in an app that critics have said makes buying stock feel like an online game. <sighs> what are you talking about? What do you mean? Yeah. Like, who cares what the UI is like? Maybe it's not boring as hell. Right, exactly. Or like it's easy to actually use. It's yeah, all, or, it, or it like makes sense, God forbid, and is accessible to people. Exactly. It's like they and make then, it confusing for a reason. It's kind of like legal jargon. Right. When you actually like boil down legal jargon, you're like, okay, that sentence makes sense. With all like Why the litigious a- um, verbiage that you use, it's really hard to understand. But like it's kind of like they keep things at a certain level so that the masses can't access it. And oh so my God, Robin exactly. Hood, is making it accessible. And then the big wigs up top have a lot of problems with that. And like Leon Cooperman or whatever his name is, was going on making an asshole out of himself on oh, all these programs. Did you see there's, um, we should find it and like post it on our Instagram. Yeah. Follow us. Um, <laughs> where they, there was like a clip montage of all these, like mostly unfortunately white, like old ass, ugly white dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Just bitching oh, about yeah. Robin Hood investors and they, they were like they don't know what they're doing they think that we're the bad guys you kind you're of kind of the- sounding exactly like the bad guy right you now you look like a villain right now you're, and then, you're really not nailing the unbad guy approach and then their whole thing like he literally said at one point he was like um he was like this is just a fancy way of attacking wealthy people and I'm like poor wealthy people like what a bummer uh, what a, like, it's the strangest yeah. like I'm just like are you listening to the words that you're <laughs> saying like are you trying to convince them not to hate you? Because I know. what are you doing? <laughs> you're doing a really bad job. And like, you're just pissed because these people are outsmarting you at your own game. Well, they're also pissed because they, they, well, hold on. All right. So let me keep going. And okay. then, and then we'll circle back to the <sighs> but have thoughts anyway. Okay. So, okay. Now we've got the, we've got the commission free trading platform. We know hedge funds are in there doing risky shit in order to make money faster which I'm like not even mad about, but just it's risky, right? Yeah. Risk means you could lose money. And um, we have GameStop who's, <laughs> we don't know, just love, love in life. Anyway, yeah. so now let's enter Reddit Wall Street bets. So okay. we know Reddit, obviously crazy ass forum. Uh, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of bad. <laughs> it's 
forever dramatic. <laughs> Let me just, it just got a lot of action going on. And a lot yeah. of users is the other side. Wall Street Bets is one of the um, the groups within Reddit, and it bills itself as the 4chan with a Bloomberg terminal. <laughs> LOL. Great. I mean, yeah, and I it's just, that. it's wonderful. It Creative started in people. 2012. It went from 1 million members at the beginning of 2021 to now has 7 million members. Wow. Work. And um, the community is described as having a crass outer shell, whereby users refer to themselves as, I don't want to say the word, but a word for... Uh, it's an anagram of traitors, the R word. <laughs> I would I would say it, but I feel like I shouldn't. You know, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. I shouldn't, but we know the word, right? They yeah, refer to themselves yeah. as that and autists, which that's probably also a bad word, but I don't even know. <laughs> and flood the group with nerdy memes. That's like a, a quote around it. So point being, these guys, you you guys have been on Reddit. You know, it's the same fucking yeah. bro, like going in there, and they are crazy, like comments jokes like they have this yolo attitude um they go they're and having grab fun. They're, they're having, having fun, fun. God they're God having bid and they're they're grabbing like what they call meme stocks where they just go all in or for some reason they make a case like you should invest in this one and you know get after it and then they what i really think is cool about it is they've been doing this for a while yeah. and they've they've had some successes like deep fucking value my king <laughs> and then they've also had some a ton of losers like there was a guy who put everything into the Argent, argentinian peso hours before it <laughs> collapsed <laughs> and <laughs> also funny is like all these big wig old you know farts that are on there being like ah these redditors they don't understand the risk it's gonna end in tears no they know buddy and i'm like yeah they're aware of the risk they've lost things before it's so they act like they like are unaware that they might lose money they're like Like, it's so strange like they're like it might literally the quote was like <laughs> this is going to end in tears for people and it's like is that the worst thing that oh no people cry? that happens <laughs> like, we are fuck. adults millennials yeah. at this point are like in our late 30s. 20s to 30s yeah, like yeah. we're fine we're fine and <laughs> my favorite one is the, the guy do you remember this is its own episode but just if you remember this is super freaking funny when oil prices went super down Yes. So essentially there was a situation where you would have futures of oil and you would assume that you could pay those off. And like futures means you would yeah. take physical deli- physical delivery of oil. Like which to your house? <laughs> you, if you didn't get rid of your, your future. <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. What the fuck is a future? Don't worry about it right now. Okay. Point <laughs> being though, there was a situation. It's its own episode. It's like a okay. big thing to dig into. But this one guy, <laughs> he made a bet on the futures or whatever of oil and had a situation where for like a day or two, like he was documenting this. He was like (laughs) going to have to take like a lot of barrels of oil physically to him. Oh my God. To be delivered. And he was like, holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) Ah! He's like, empty out the swimming pool. I don't fucking know. And one of his, everyone was like, you could send it here. (laughs) Like anyway. on Reddit? They were like, yeah, it was like a, it was like a thread of just like, it's a beautiful community. People freaking out about this guy about to get like so much oil. (laughs) That's actually hilarious. Oh my God. It's so funny. And that they call it is lost porn. So they like, oh. they would post images of like how much money they lost when things like went awry yeah. and they were like, ah, fuck me. Right. And everyone's like, yeah, fuck you, dude. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it's beautiful. It's exciting. It's, it's really, really cool. Yeah, what a great like community to have when you do lose money where it's like, remember when I thought this was a good idea? Ha ha. And everybody Look how kind of stupid like, I am. <laughs> yeah. It's just like fun and like nice to have like the support of people rather than just investing on your own, losing money on your own. It's kind of like, it's, it's fun. Fun. Right, exactly. Like, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I was, I was aware of Wall Street bets. I wasn't active in it, but I'm like yeah. probably about to start, you know, digging more in. Um, yeah, I don't me think, too. I don't know if they're. I don't <laughs> know if it's going to be legit anymore. We'll see how this plays out. But totally. Like, um, quickly, I'm jealous. I wish the guy, I the guy who founded it, James Rago, whatever Ragozinski, lives in Mexico City with like it's like random normal people. He has like two yeah. kids, lives in Mexico <laughs> City. He's a consultant. Love him. Um, but he got kicked out as a moderator because he was um, mad about, like, obviously, you know, if there's a million people, there's going to be a lot of different types of people on there. <laughs> yeah. And there were some people who were using, like, racial slurs and things like that. Which really? Isn't, which isn't great. It's not good. Why? Exactly. But yeah. it's also, 
it's it's Reddit. You know, yeah. there's a variety of folks in here. No matter what threat, and you're gonna like, find someone calling something homophobic, or right. whatever. And giving people anonymity in any way is crazy. Totally. Like, have you ever seen the fucking comment section on Citizen App? Holy shit. Talk about racist. Oh, it's fucking boy. insane. People are crazy. People are crazy. I would and love to know like who they actually are. It just turns out it's like AOC saying all this horrible yeah. stuff on Citizen. <laughs> We're like, okay, work. <laughs> there are so many funny stories though of people like tracking down folks who've been yeah. like trolling them or something like oh, that. Yeah. And it's just a normal dude. <laughs> just army hammer. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would track. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So enter deep fucking value. So that's his Reddit username. That's his Reddit honest, username. <laughs> we love him. We love him. Keith Gill, aka Roaring Kitty on YouTube. <laughs> I spent a long time watching his YouTube videos <laughs> yesterday. Uh, check him out. My favorite part about, first of all, he was cover of the Wall Street Journal today. What's good, my dude? Amazing. Keith, what's up? <laughs> He, um, you get a physical he, copy of the Wall Street um, Journal? Just on the weekends. I oh, accidentally okay. signed up for it. I was like, huh. uh, okay, I'm going mean, to, I'm going to use this to maybe read it, but not yeah, really. m- mostly just put look it out smart. look really smart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> look at me with my newspaper. <laughs> I am are like, educated. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, okay, really? <laughs> like enjoy your red wine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so Keith um, has this YouTube page, which I'm obsessed with. He wears primarily cat t-shirts. Really? Which, like, drop the link. Drop the fucking link, (laughs) Keith. I need these shirts. Um, He's been doing these videos for ages. He always has a tiny little kitten in the bottom right corner, just like this in the... It's the funniest... like a like a like A A real cat. uh, No, it's a... Uh, like icon or whatever. Oh, oh, oh. It's just like he's so nerdy and Love but he's it. like also weirdly pretty humble okay. and like very researched, insanely yeah. researched. So that's one of the things where they keep being like these uneducated investors and it's like, mm-hmm. yo, this guy had he dug into all their financial reports, like he knows GameStop and he's like making an educated yeah. you know bet on them he's making yeah. he, and he understands the risk i hate taking. people in any profession but particularly these old farts that it's like they behave as though nobody else could possibly do what they do or right. they could nobody else could possibly know figure what they it know. out yeah and like there's so many people like that like have you ever like interviewed for a job and they're like this job is really hard and it takes a really fucking long time to learn it. and i'm like okay listen i can do the job that you're doing i just need to be trained on it but yeah. it's like people behave as though they don't yeah. It's like impossible for someone else to know because what they know. Because it's a point of pride because they're like, well, yeah. if anyone can do it, then why am I special? Right, right. And they're yeah. like, well, you're not. So Maybe we just got to all accept that and uh, we'll be happier that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's, again, <laughs> a whole longer thing. Um, point being, Keith Gill actually might be special. I love him. Um, and yeah. everyone on Wall Street Bets is like obsessed with him and love outside it. of Wall Street Bets. Calling him <laughs> pioneer, fearless bag holder, better than diamond hands, richer than your wife's boyfriend's uncle. Yes, this is none other than deep fucking value himself. <laughs> He's a legend. So what did he do to become such a legend? Okay. He started this whole thing back in 2019. So, wow. So like two seconds ago. Basically. Yeah. Like, yeah. well, like, but also before COVID, like he couldn't yeah. have known he's had just such a wild ride with this. Yeah. He bought a $54,000 call option on GameStop um, for January, 2021. This Whoa. Now. That's weird. So what a call option is real quick, because I didn't realize this isn't what most of the um, Redditors are doing. Most of them are just doing traditional like market buys of the yeah. stocks, which is like you just, hey, that stock is worth $10. Here's $10. Can I have it? Uh-huh. The end. Yeah. Call options are different. Call options, let me go to my notes because I don't want to fuck this up, are basically you pay, um, if you have a share of GameStop and okay. I don't, and I can say, okay, it's currently worth, if for in this case it was $3 a share. Okay. Of, I don't want to buy it from you right now, but in January 2021, I will buy it from you at $8 a share, or I want the option to buy it from you then. And in order to okay. secure that contract... I will pay you a premium of whatever it is, probably, you know, let's call it a 1% or so. Yeah. Now, in okay. order to secure the right to buy that from you in January 2021, no matter the price. So okay. I have that option. So basically so what he's assuming I'm so me as the seller, I'm assuming that it's going to go down and I'm going to get more money from you later on and not, and he's assuming the opposite. 
Sort of. So that's okay. an important fact and, and good question. Option is a right to buy. It's not like compulsory. He doesn't have to buy it at that oh, point. Okay, okay. So Keith, as you can imagine, if GameStop, you know, just let's just say it stayed at three dollars a share and he yeah. bought the option to buy it at eight dollars a share in January. Why would he do that? He's yeah. not going to. He would just say, no, thank you. But he'd be out the premium that he had paid for the right to hold that contract. I see. I, see. Um, I couldn't figure out how much exactly he had paid. But realistically, it's probably in the order of a couple grand to have mm-hmm. had that option. That was like his overall risk. That was the money he was like, if I either way, this, it's gone. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But um, so he and obviously the person who's selling the stock is like, Listen, this is GameStop. It's not going above eight dollars a share. <laughs> yeah. If you want to pay me a couple grand now, go for it. I would be so skeptical. I would be like, why the fuck would you ever do this? Yeah, you know. So it's it's and and these people who are doing these kinds of like in, engaging in options, they they usually do it at pretty big scale. So if you dive deeper into it, apparently it usually comes out to where they they end up making some money, they lose on some. It's kind of like insurance, okay, in a way. Yeah. Yep, um, that makes sense to me. Yep, and, and it like kind of ensures like a stream of income over time, and every once in a while things like this happen. And realistically, those guys are like, well, listen, I don't get to enjoy the upside, but at the other <laughs> hand, like you know, it, my stock still raised like one hundred fifty percent or whatever, and I sold it at eight dollars and whatever, you know, yeah, yeah, game over, and I still got the premium. Okay. So he's like, you know, I didn't win this round, but I still made money, so I'm not like crying or I'm not ruined. Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> God forbid there's tears. <laughs> God forbid. Goddamn adults. Anyway, so call options. Um he does this and he posts like an hour long video explaining why he was doing this call option. He included the chart. You can kind of see it here. Pretty big involved chart and we can post it or something if you give yeah. a shit. Um, but basically he was buying $54,000 worth of GameStop, um, at that, you know, $8 per share. And, um, people thought he was fucking crazy, but he (laughs) was like, listen, he went into it. He was like, GameStop's getting new management. Um, they, you know, he believed that they were going to go into this more like experiential kind of Mm. thing where you like, which I actually am like, maybe makes sense. Like gaming is so huge. Like if you could do some sort of community building around it and have it where people come in and like. People come in to play board games together. Why would they not do True. some sort of... Well, isn't that already a thing? Like, what's the thing where, like, people... Like, Call of Duty is, like... You can do it online, for yeah. sure. But I think they were doing more, like, a physical, like... You know, if maybe they bring in a creator of the game. There's certainly... Yeah, yeah. I, I don't wait, know There's the, paths to revenue. There's paths to innovation, for sure. Absolutely. There's, yeah. there's no way there's, like nothing to be done there yeah and if they um, brought in new leadership you would think that they would be at least attempting to do that as opposed to just being like all right we'll just sell this off and exactly get the fuck out of here. yeah um and the other side of it is we talked about this but obviously gamestop primarily sells video games and their um physical discs for most games are still like 50 percent of the market strangely <laughs> enough like to who to, well and i was thinking about it but like so for instance i have a switch and Breath of the Wild is a huge fucking file. Okay. So for Breath of the Wild, like I have a fair amount of my games that are on the Switch itself. <laughs> I, I can't believe you. Did I know. <laughs> but the actual disc itself, I'll use for Breath of the Wild because I don't want to use that storage space on the disc okay, on the Switch. Yeah. 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 You know, sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Fair enough. It's tiny. It doesn't really. It's not a huge deal. Okay. I don't know if that's going to be continuing. Storage is getting cheaper, etc. Who? I'm not a god. I don't know. But Wait in. Up. Currently, it's about 50-50 is okay. the point. The other thing that he noted was that the short rate on, the short interest on GameStop was 140%. Yeah, so I don't yeah. know if you're able to explain this, but um, I was having trouble wrapping my mind around how it could be north of 100% yep. of a short. I, I actually spent a long time figuring this okay. out. So I'm going to do my best to explain it. Okay, and so, I'll ask questions that you guys might be having at home. And like, if I fuck up, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Here we are. So first of all, let's, let's talk about like, you know, when you're, we already talked a little bit about float float yeah. is the publicly available shares of the company. So this is all in, you know, for those shares that are floated, uh, these are transactions that can occur on them. So over 75% of game top game stops shares are held privately. So this is about 25% of the shares that are available to be doing these kinds of actions on, um, which is like vaguely important because usually shorting would occur on companies or companies that don't have as many shares outstanding okay. to the public. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So shorting in general to back up, if I, if you have a stock okay, and I see that you have the stock and I want to borrow it from you 
at a price of ten dollars. So, so borrowing it, does that mean like I get money from you when you're borrowing? I'm gonna it? pay you interest. Okay. So you're gonna be like, whatever. I'm just fucking here, sitting here with the yeah. stock. I don't. I'm just vibing out. Yeah. You want to borrow it for a little while? Have at it. Okay. And I'm like, I'm gonna borrow it and short it, and I have to put up. You know, I have to like kind of prove a couple financial things so that you know that the risk of me doing this isn't too high. Mm -hmm. um, the reason that's important comes into play with the hedge funds in a little bit. So then I, I borrow the stock from you for and it's at the market for $10 and I'm like, cool. I immediately sell it. So yeah. I sell the stock that I borrowed from you and I'm like, dope, I have $10 now. And the person that you sold it to, they don't, they don't know. They don't know that it's borrowed. Exactly. Interesting. And, um, and again, this kind of like, you know, oftentimes what happens if I ask for it back? Exactly. Well, yeah. <laughs> you're nailing it. You know, okay. It's uh, it can be trouble. So I only would do this because the reason you short a stock is because you're like, it's GameStop. It's worthless. Like it's going to yeah. go down. Maybe I think that they're about to like release their earnings reports. And I believe that they're not going to do very well in them. Blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. I have reason to believe that in the next amount of time, um, which there, I don't think there is like a set amount of time that shorts can occur. I think it's just like, you know, as long as you're willing to sit in the interest and you're, you're just live, vibing it out. Okay. Or unless the, um, um, lender issues a call, which is like, pay me back right now. So which if they I, can if do, I were, like, give it back right now. Yeah. Like, I would have to. Okay. Um, with pretty short notice, apparently though, that's not what occurred in this case. Okay. Um, so I'm hoping that the price of GameStop will go down to like $6 or something like that. I can go back to the market and buy it standard from another person mm -hmm. and then be like, look at, I have your stock and give it back to you. And then in the meantime, $4, that difference, I pocket. Got it. So I'm like, fuck yeah, I just made money. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of things those hedge funds- $4 minus the interest that you gave to me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, actually okay. that's a great point. Um, so that's the goal of shorting. That's what you assume is going to happen. I'm sure it gets more complex than that. Um, I'm sure it doesn't work out like that often. Uh, yeah. I'm sure there's- like anything in finance, there's fucking yeah. squirreliness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Things get weird. Um, but anyway, so they, they, sh they were trying to short this stock. Um, and that's, hold on, where, where am I around this? <laughs> oh, okay. So the hedge funds were, were shorting. Oh, I was going to talk about the 140%. Okay. Okay. So 140% that occurred because I, well, I borrowed one share. So say I borrow one share and then I lend it to someone or then I sell it. And then that person doesn't know that I still owe that share over here mm -hmm. um, because there's no like physical giving the shares or anything yeah, like yeah. that. They do the same thing. Oh. They do the same thing. And now all of a sudden there's three parties involved and one stock has been shorted oh, okay. multiple times. Whoa. Okay. It's not necessarily like it should balance itself out. But in cases where like a lot of people are shorting a stock, it can go over the total amount of shares that are available in the float in the public. Interesting. So in this case, it was 140% of like overall shares, but of the available float, it was like somewhere between 300 to 500% of the float was being shorted. So it was being shorted multiple, multiple, multiple times. This feels really illegal, doesn't it? It does, but it's like not weirdly. I know, but it, if, it, it like, feels it, naughty. The idea of <laughs> shorting in general, like borrowing a stock and then selling it without that person knowing just feels illegal, period. The, like, it does the first part of it. Yeah, I know. I, I, I don't love the whole concept. And the other side that's kind of awkward is that when hedge funds do it, they're obviously, so let's, let's do the reverse. Say the stock goes up in price. And you call it and you're like, pay me back. And mm -hmm. it goes up to $12. And I'm like, yeah. oh, fucking shit. Yeah, I go yeah. buy it for $12 and then I pay you back and I lose $2 plus interest or whatever in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, that's not great, but there's no limit on how expensive a stock can get. Yeah. You can technically lose infinite money in this yeah. scenario because as high as the stock goes, you would still have to buy it at $20. Five hundred dollars, right. whatever it is, rather than obviously, if you're betting that the company's going to grow, all you stand to lose is what you put in that initial ten dollars. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that does make sense. Okay, so it's really, really risky, mm -hmm. and this is why things like those hedge funds that are doing more aggressive market maneuvers will do it because they're they vibe out on risk. They love it. Yeah. Um, and they probably have a ton of capital to just like, yeah, fucking push yeah. around. Yes. So that's going on with GameStop's 
stocks. There's a number of companies that are doing this, but one in particular that we'll focus on is Melvin Capital. And they were shorting the market. And the other thing to remember is that when you short a stock, you're obviously like, I really want it to go down in price. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a huge bummer for me if it doesn't. Yeah. So they'll do big PR campaigns around, hey, we're shorting this stock. We hate it. You should hate it too. Really? Look how much we hate it for X, Y, and Z reason. Yeah. They do big analytics reports oh, on- Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. And obviously like influential people are, you know, if they can get them to short a stock too, like folks like, you know, any of the top executives or any of those top investors, like a Warren Buffett type or whatever it yeah. may be, it's going to increase the likelihood that the rest of the public is going to be like- yeah, fuck that stock. Mm. And like, oh, we should sell at the minimum, which will drive the price down. Hmm. So they're trying to have that happen. So they're they're like, we're shortening it. We're vibing out. So um, all the all like the manipulation of the stock market that they're accusing the Redditors of being guilty of, which they are guilty of, but they've been doing that. Oh, 100%. It, they've been doing that the entire time. I mean, it's just like normal. Like when, when yeah. you say market manipulation, it's like, I mean... It's Manipulation sort of like is a weird word. It's like, like, listen, I know this is why I'm doing this because of these reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, here are the reasons. Make your yeah. own choice based on those. Okay. Yeah. Fair it's enough. It's sort of like, it's more like market influence than yeah. manipulation. And and that's fair. Like, I guess I don't really know what the distinction or what, when it becomes illegal is. Probably when mm -hmm. you have insider information, which I don't believe any of these folks did. Yeah. As far as I'm aware. Well, okay. So anyway, deep fucking value is just like, y'all are idiots. GameStop rules. I'm going to put a ton of money in it. And I'm going to continue. And he was getting roasted. Like he would post yeah. an update like once a month. He would lose a lot of money too. Because it's like, this has been a, a long cycle for yeah. him. And it's gone up and it's gone down. And so people online on Wall Street Bets were just like, you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and ha ha ha. And like, just like getting after him. I would love to just take screenshots. Of I know. know. And send them to them. I know. Like, Remember when you called me dumb? <laughs> yeah. But also that's. Oh, your phone's ringing. Oh, no. Okay. okay. We're back. We're back. Um, but anyway, so they were getting, he was getting roasted quite a bit, but it's like, that's just also part of the culture of. Wall Street bets and it's not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like that's yeah. I love this community. I love it's them. Fun. I love them. So um, it's like to things, toxic masculinity it's like, in a Reddit thread. Yeah, <laughs> like a safe version. I don't know if that exists. I don't know. Um, so we're we're going through. GameStop is continuing. COVID hits. I can't imagine that was well. COVID was interesting for the gaming industry mm -hmm. because do you remember like you couldn't buy game consoles for a long time. Um, they were in high demand i don't because i don't game but okay. i don't because i'm not a fucking loser because <laughs> i have like friends i'm just totally kidding um i don't remember that but that's interesting and also like you would expect that obviously it makes sense their home and they hey what if you just up. sit at home what is there to do jerk off and and play watch, video games and watch know, netflix my Three 600 things. pound life all day every day that's which... and eat <laughs> okay, so fourth and drink. I'm oh, sorry. So we got five things you could do during quarantine. That's it. That's it. Um, so things started to look up for GameStop um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, people were buying, you know, more video game accessories and shit like that. Mm -hmm. um, also, really interestingly, is a couple pretty influential people started to kind of catch wind of all this, and they were like interested as well. Okay, so specifically. Who are these Ryan Cohen, and he's okay. someone who we'll definitely talk about in another episode. We'll do a more deeper profile on him because, like, he's crushing. Also, I think him? he's kind of hot too. So, but I like <laughs> what I think I'm just attracted to money. I think I'm like, yeah, oh, what it yeah. is. Please. So just, just There's not. no use in pretending you're not, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's fine. We live in New York City. It's fine. <laughs> I like a guy with, quote, ambition, <laughs> aka money. <laughs> Whatever, I gotta live. Uh, uh, exactly. So, Ryan Cohen is the former CEO of online pet food retailer Chewy, which oh, yeah. I love Chewy Me and too. I don't know why. Does the concept of Chewy make no sense to you, but yeah, I'm still like into it? Yeah, that's the thing. It's like I order things on Chewy for Greg, who's my cat, but also like I could just order those same exact things on Amazon. Yeah. For the most part. And I don't understand why I'm like, but a, but pet food should be from Chewy. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense at all. But like he nailed it. I don't know how he figured out how to get this to happen, but he did. And um, we love him. So he joined, um, he saw GameStop and he was like, I'm gonna buy some GameStop. Okay. He now owns 13% of outstanding shares, which Jesus gets Christ. him a position on the company's board, which happened in September, 2020. Oh my God. Now this guy's, he's one of those hot executives. People are like, he's smart as hell. Yeah. Look what he did with Chewy. Um, 
maybe the stock is undervalued. So that okay. rumor starts. Then Michael Burry, the guy from The Big Short, remember? Yeah, yeah. He uh, also revealed he was in on GameStop and had done a decently significant investment. This just occurred to me that The Big Short is about shorting stocks. This just occurred to me. I've never seen the movie, but now, <laughs> now I'm realizing that it what that's is, about. <laughs> we should watch it and then just do like, like our cover of The Big Short because... Okay. It's a great movie. And it's based on a true story, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, that's a, that's a later date. You're like, Come no, on no, back. Like, you're like the actor from The Big Short. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot more sense that he was the actual guy from yeah, The Big yeah, Short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a real dude. And then um, Elon Musk, because this guy never misses an opportunity to make fucking everything about you know himself. What? Like, you we know what? You got it, Elon. We got it, but I kind of fucking like Elon Musk for that reason. He's... First of all, he's pro comedy, which I yep, enjoy. He's love very that. much pro comedy, and he just says controversial shit all the time. And it's just entertaining as fuck, and he's like out of his mind. He's I, out of I his like mind, him. and everything needs to be about him. But I like I kind I'm obviously a, I'm a stand up comic. Like everything yeah. needs to be about me as well. So of like course. I get it. I feel <laughs> like I get it. Like he's one of those Kate executives where I'm just like I'm good for you for just he made. Remember when he made that flame torch? Or like no. <laughs> And it like sold out like right away. He was just for no goddamn reason. He was like, we're going to make, cause it'd be fucking cool. Great. Be dope. And I fucking like, love him. You know what? And I love the fact that he's married to Grimes of all people. Like what and, is and happening? And we already talked about his kid. Yeah. Like, yeah. A robot name. Where he was, XA95 yeah. or whatever the fuck. Windows 95. Yeah, Windows 95. <laughs> yeah, like, okay. So funny. Um, and then Mark Cuban. Um, I don't know if he went on in on GameStop, but he recently was quoted being like, I fucking love Wall Street yeah. bets. It brings yeah. like financial, um, you know, information to, you know, normal, ordinary uh, mm -hmm. citizens. And my 11 year old has made money. From I saw being this. On it. Do, you might yeah. have seen the same interview that I did. Maybe. I think it was on CNN or uh -huh. MSNBC or something like that. But I like his position on it because he was like, all these people are really mad at these people for just being intelligent. <laughs> and for like, literally doing, and doing smart What moves. they're allowed to do. It's Yeah. He was they, like, they nailed it. They he did was it like, right. None of this is illegal. And people are like angry that they're not going to get in trouble in the way that they want them to because they're losing money. But it's just a no fault. It's yeah. like, you know, it's whatever. They're beating you at your own game. Is They're beating you at their own game. Or, yeah. I like and Mark the fact Cuban that too. you think it's your own game. Like, yeah. it's not. You don't yeah. own this game. You You're playing your own player in the game. Right. Um, and we'll, Other we're people about are to... allowed to enter into this stock market. Exactly. So we're about to get into all of the nonsense that really went down. But um, so deep fucking value. These guys start coming on board. Deep fucking value keeps adding additional options. So he has them going now into at various like strike prices, which means like essentially through the rest of this year, he's going to continue to be able to buy additional GameStop shares mm -hmm. for like a couple bucks. Yeah. When they're ver like, I think they're trading for like four hundred dollars um, yeah. or whatever. Like, okay. They're <laughs> that is more. <laughs> <laughs> And also so funny that game stock is now up to four hundred dollars. I know it's so funny. So he was going what they call YOLO. You only live once, or doubling down no. um, on, but because <laughs> uh, GameStop's going to the moon. Uh, yeah. Point being, um, blah 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 blah. So by August twenty twenty, his contracts were worth six hundred thousand dollars. In September, he crested one million dollars. Mid October, two point three million dollars. He entered twenty twenty one with more than three point one million in game stock. And then shit got really crazy as his, you know, as more people got on board, uh, it got went higher and higher. And as of his latest update, um, Deep Fucking Values E Trade account is worth twenty two point eight million dollars. Four point four of it is in cash, which he pulled out, and it all started from fifty three k in options premiums. I love this man. What Legend. a smart guy. Legend. Yeah. What a king. He's crushing. Let's go back to the, the folks who are not crushing right now. <laughs> and that is Melvin Capital <laughs> and others. But we're just going to kind of focus on him. What a like yeah. fucking dusty ass name to yeah. Melvin, Melvin Capital. Capital. Just something like Melvin sure. Capital. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to work at fucking Melvin Capital. I want to work for Deep Fucking Value. Exactly. Deep Fucking Value. Um, so they shorted them so heavily that they, and obviously the price went up <laughs> so they yeah. were like holy hell we're in trouble um they ended up needing a 2.75 billion dollar infusion from money managers 0.72 and citadel on monday in order to not go under um see i don't understand why that's not illegal just like bailing people out for these mistakes because like you can, nobody would bail out deep fucking value 
He would it's have to pay all that. Because it's a good old boys club. And I they understand all know that, each but, other. No, I, I hear I, you. But I'm saying like you are technically allowed to give in a loan. I know that you're technically allowed to, but I think it's fucked up that everybody's it's like certainly. the redditors are the problem here, and it's like I don't know about that. I feel like the system as it exists is the problem here. And listen, I don't want to get too like much of like an anarchist yeah. thing. I don't. The I, system, I don't, man. Yeah, I don't feel like I have like enough of a grasp on these things to really speak intelligently about that. But at the same <laughs> to time, to really take like a hard like get yeah. rid of it. <laughs> but the people that are like backing up, like. Uh, like my girl Liz Warren, I love Liz Warren, but she was saying like she was like backing up the hedge funds. And was I'm like, she really? She that's what I saw and something. Yeah, I don't know. And but, again, we'll but we'll do a like, part two. We'll, we'll try to be more educated on. I'm like I don't understand like how anybody could be like backing them. I'm like I don't. Who cares about them? I mean, and that's the thing is that like. Well, hold on. Let me let me finish this, and we'll continue to talk about it because when you're investing like this, you're you're taking on risk. Right. That's yeah. the whole thing. If you're, you gotta be willing to risk it all. Like you gotta be willing to, that's, to say like, if you're going to do big risky bets, again. like, you know, that's kind of the thing. Yeah. Um, that's what investment is. If you, if don't invest, if you're not willing to say goodbye to that money. Yep. Um, okay. Says somebody who's never so, invested. So <laughs> Citadel goes in and they bail out. And uh, this is part that I will circle back on. Cause this is super important. We have Melvin Capital, who is about to go under, allegedly, whatever. And now we have these two other head funds, Point72 and Citadel, that are going in to save them. Now, remember at the beginning of the story, we were talking about how Robin Hood makes money. They m- okay. make money from these market makers who are groups like these folks that mm-hmm. kind of allow them to do these, um, to, to fill their trades is kind okay. of how I understand it. So... Robin Hood is operating on Citadel's money market mm. and Citadel is one of the primary, um, he, one of the major people who, what is it? Provides a lot of Robin Hood's revenue by buying, um, trade data. Okay. From Citadel huh. or Citadel buys it from Robin Hood. Excuse me. Got it. So they are fucking financially. Yeah. And now Citadel comes in and bails out Melvin who Robin, not Robin Hood, but Robin Hood, primarily Robin Hood users yeah. are kind of fucking over oh, completely wow. fairly. Yeah. So now all of a sudden Robin Hood is in this weird like threesome mm-hmm. where they're like, okay, well now Melvin has, you know, Citadel has a share in Melvin. So if Melvin goes down, then Citadel loses money and they're the ones who pay us. Uh Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cut to Thursday. Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. Did I talk about short squeezing yet? Um, I think so, but maybe not. Well, let me briefly talk about that. I apologize if this is jumping around a little bit. Short squeezing is essentially the selling. That's making it more than a hundred percent. We went over that, right? No. So that's a little bit, um, I don't actually know what that's called when that happens. Short squeezing is a little bit different. So let's say the price is going up and all of a sudden you're like, holy shit, the price is way more than $10 and I know you shorted my stock. Give it back. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you either do a call or you have, um, you basically put assets up and say like, these are kind of like protecting your investment. That's lowering my risk. Mm -hmm. And, um, as the, as the market continues to increase, I'm like, okay, well you no longer are able to hold the stock that I lent to you. I need it back the stock that you shorted. Okay. So those folks have to, the short sellers have to go, are forced to go buy the stocks that they had initially, you know, shorted to cover their short positions, which obviously when you buy more stocks, it raises the value of their stocks, triggering more short sellers (laughs) to have to do the exact same thing. So that's why it's called a squeeze because it's like the short sellers start to buy and then they like more short sellers start to buy. And it kind of is like this, like cycles up, 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 up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's essentially more, more intense. Exactly. So that's what a short, short squeeze is. So this is all occurring. This is why they needed that bailout. Um, so now, now we have the situation where Robin hood is, um, you know, in a weird position with Citadel Thursday happens Robin hood or deep fucking Val or wall street bets. Excuse me. There's a lot of <laughs> things to keep track of wall street bets goes private for a couple okay. hours on there. I, I had like an anxiety attack. I was really? like, <gasps> like, it's so scary. Like the fact that like yeah, they all can, of a like, sudden, off. all of a sudden the, the forum, it just went private and allegedly it was to like clean it up some, which I kind of get, but I just wish there'd been more clarity yeah. around that up top because it really scared the shit it out of some really people. It was really big brothery. But then the other side of it is Robin Hood 
halted trading on GameStop and I think AMC as well. Cause there were, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the other thing to note. There were other stocks that were involved in this as well as <laughs> I bought shares of Build-A-Bear. <laughs> Did you really? I bought Build-A-Bear on Nokia and GameStop. Um, okay. Full disclosure, I guess. I don't know like, yeah, if I need to tell difference? you. Yeah. And um, I ended up selling Build-A-Bear and Nokia and doubling down on GameStop, which I have like two shares. So like, but whoop you fucking do. <laughs> hey, whatever. Yeah, that's I know. Cool. I just like wanted to be involved. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just, yeah. Like, Oh, what are they doing things without me? <laughs> Can you, I know. Me? I feel so left out. What yeah. Um, but like for a while I was like, well, I just lost $40. Like that's been my big, like, yeah. you know, like work. I feel like Wall Street bets is totally not going to be the place to go after this. Even if it I is know. a forum, it's, there's going to be some other like secret forum. I know. You know. And like, please send me the link. Send us the link. Let me, let me I see. I want to make money. Okay, so Robin Hood stopped um, GameStop from trading and a couple others as well. And everyone was like, holy shit, yeah. dude. See, this feels like very illegal to me. Very. Because and this is this is what's going to be the story yeah. next week is what went down in yeah. that 48 hours. Because that doesn't make any sense to me because they're not involved technically in like GameStop. Or, they're just like a, a they platform should, they to should, be. They shouldn't be they involved. Should be unbiased. Like unbiased. Just, you should, it's like, I mean, it's technically a free market, right? We should yeah. be able to say free market, but then this shit kind of yeah, happens. And you're like... Okay, well, clearly not. Like, we're mm. not allowed to share trade, but, you know, all the big guys are still yeah. able to. I have Fidelity, so fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I, I mean, and I, I, I really respect Robin Hood, um, I think. I don't know. Maybe not anymore. I did at least respect them. Yeah. Um, obviously, everyone freaked out. Trade uh, Shares of GameStop went down during that time because people were you know, a lot of the people didn't have access anymore. They needed right. to set up other accounts in order to re-engage. Mm-hmm. Um, as a result, it went down. And apparently there was a tweet that apparently, who, who was it? One of the CEOs at, I think, Twitch, Justin Can said on Twitter that he had received a tip alleging that Citadel reloaded their shorts on GameStop before Robinhood suspended the buys. Huh. That is not good. If that is true. I can't believe that he would It is a that, tweet though. from him. I don't know if it's legit. I have no idea. Yeah. Again, don't sue me. I'm just telling you what happened. It's kind of a matzo ball for him to just put out there. Yeah, it's it's a it's certainly an allegation. But also yeah. if it's true, like I will, good for him for fucking being like, What? Yeah. Uh, yeah. it also might be public knowledge, like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, both AOC and Ted Cruz were like, hello, like SEC, what is going on with this? This is probably not okay, we think. And then Ted Cruz was like, hey, AOC, you want to partner up on this? And she was like, like, "Mm, you almost had me murdered last (laughs) week. So literally, you could still go fuck yourself, but this isn't great. (laughs) I was laughing to myself, though. I was like, is, did we need deep fucking value to unite the parties this is fantastic how beautiful but ted cruz is a fucking human monster obviously literally you almost had me murdered was her tweet or something yeah something like like she was like i'm fine with teaming up with people in the gop you are not one of them because you literally tried to get me murdered like she was she was she was was like two weeks ago you tried to get me murdered so i'm gonna be pretty much all set on yeah, this one I'm good. thank you though thank, thank you for your you offer for your offer but no thanks <laughs> um i and... love that rumor that he's the zodiac killer it's so <laughs> fucking funny he is so yeah um... spread that rumor it's true it's true it's just a fact so um robin hood then started releasing some statements to various news sources which i literally just in the wall street journal there's an article about it right now as of this morning, there was one last night. So this is the part that we're going to circle back on because it's it's start, it's ongoing. Mm-hmm. Um, everything is ongoing, but this specifically. They said that they closed the trading on it because they were raising an infusion of more than a billion dollars from existing investors. They were grappled with extraordinarily high volume of trading this week as individual investors have piled into stocks like GameStop. That activity has put a strain on Robinhood, which has to pay customers who are owed money from trades while posting additional cash to its clearing facility to insulate its trading partners from potential lo- potential losses. So basically, so, and this is the thing, is that this is going into the back end, which is the confusing part, which mm-hmm. I have been doing some research on. I'm still kind of struggling to get it all sorted in my head. Yeah. But basically, there are clearing houses. There are folks who kind of track master records of trades. Okay. In um, One of them is called DTCC, which is the Depository Trust... 
<laughs> something, something. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Corporation. Something clearing, cunt. clearing cunts. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> gross. Um, and they require. Um, there's regulations, obviously, around all this, and they require some regu- regulatory amount of money to be held to back up trades, as far as I'm aware. And it seems that Robin Hood may have had some issues with that, and hence needed to raise money in order to meet those new regulations, and um, you know, be able to kind of re-engage in the market. This is what they're saying. And this is how I'm understanding what they're saying. Okay. I don't fucking buy it personally because that seems real sketchy. Yeah. This, how much money are we really talking about here? Like GameStop, I get it. Like Mm -hmm. a lot of volume, unless it's like the volume of the trades that was causing the issues, which again, I don't know how the financials work on the back end, but like, we're still talking a tiny sliver of the market as a whole. In comparison to like the market. Yeah, the total market. Right? Like we're not yeah, like, I'm sorry. Like there's billions of transactions that occur a day mm-hmm. on Apple, Amazon, Chewy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stop and shop. Like, I don't know. Like all of these various companies that are out there. Like I know a lot of people went in on GameStop, but like even if there's a couple million additional transactions, that shouldn't make a dent. Like why now? Why why is this becoming such an issue? It, yeah. And also combined with that other thing, it just seems fishy, which, Super listen, fishy. I'm not the only one who thinks that. Um, and then Dave P- Portney, the founder of Barstool Sports, oh, yeah. which, my dude. Listen, this guy is an MVP. I know a lot of people don't like him, and he has, like, a sexist past or whatever, but it's definitely, he's doing some cool stuff in 2020. He's some definitely redeeming He's certainly qualities. involved. Yeah, yeah he really like, he's, is. he's certainly not, like, boring. <laughs> Let's just no, get on that. No. I don't know enough about him to take a strong stance. I just know that. He's bailing out small businesses right now, which is That's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Like All right. That. We'll, we'll allow it. Um, yeah. But anyway, he said... Point seventy two founder Stephen Cohen of having he accused uh, point seventy two founder excuse me Stephen Cohen of having a strong hand in today's criminal events to save hedge funds at the cost of ordinary people. Yeah, Cohen obviously was like no, <laughs> vehemently denied. Yeah, so those are fighting words. Mm-hmm. Things are weird. In the meantime, at least three U.S. lawmakers are calling for an investigation into Robin Hood's actions, and two class action lawsuits have been filed against the trading platform in federal courts in Illinois and New York. And now we're at today. Yeah. And that's basically where we're at, where we're at right. right now. Wow. And it's, it's ongoing. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm shook. <laughs> this is going to be crazy. I'm really interested to see how it's going to shake out for the Robin Hood CEO. And we were talking about this off camera before um, we started where we saw an interview with the CEO of Robin Hood talk right. with um, Chris Cuomo, actually. Yeah. And he was just like straight up not answering qu- Chris's questions. He Anything he says right now is basically going to be put into legal documents yeah. for this court case. So honestly, I doubt he goes back on air at all. I can't believe he did. He I'm like, shouldn't have. That was really stupid of him. Um, um, yeah. And he looked really shady. It looked really sketchy. And like you could tell he wasn't giving the right answers. Um, yeah, because it was very strange. There are, so there's so many like conflicts of interest in this case at the minimum. And then secondarily, like, what are we going to be doing with GameStop now? I mean, yeah. so these guys just double down on their short. Listen, to the moon. Like, I, yeah. I, it's now become a thing where I don't even give a fuck if I make money on GameStop. I don't fun. care. It's just I fun. don't care. I want to put my money in there and just as like a, it's almost like a weird form of protest at this point. It kind of is. And like, I've seen this um, floated around just like the overall discussion on like, it's been a year, what is it, a year and a half or I guess a year now of like just waiting around for like government bailouts and, st- and right. you know, stimmies and all this stuff and whatever. And people have been sitting at home angry and defenseless yeah. and without and literally a way to make money. Just being forced to random regulations. And obviously like, you know, for public health, that's awesome. Yeah. But like very much at the control of others. Yeah. We don't have our own. Right. Exactly. Control of our lives, it feels like right now. Yeah. And so I feel like all these people like banding together and just sort of like dismantling this like hierarchy of like who gets to control the money and who doesn't right. get to control the money is like really fucking cool to see and it's yeah. like it's really sophisticated in a lot of ways they're you smart know? they're not idiots yeah. and that's the problem is that like all of these but that's as so much easy as these, to these say. major news articles like i don't fully trust them because i don't know where they're getting their funding from as well no. i mean 
well, I'm sure there's a lot of really wonderful people and I'm, I'm hoping they'll do the right thing in terms of the reporting, especially as all the story comes out. Right. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're all dealing with mixed information that's available, yeah. but some of the stuff that they're trying to really just position these Redditors as being like Stupid. alt-right or like yeah. Trump supporters. And I'm like, they're not. No, they're just regular everyday people that want to make a living. Yeah. And maybe some of them are. But yeah, like, sure. I mean, if you're going to have six million people, fucking, of course some of them of are. Of course. Like, yeah, you're, it's, they're investors. It, this isn't about politics. It has nothing to do with politics. And like, and I think, if anything, if they do make it like some sort of political lean like that, it's just in an effort to discredit them and exactly. to get people to not want to copy them. Because people would be like, I don't want to be labeled a Trump supporter. And it's like, wait, that has nothing to fucking do with your political affiliation. No, whatsoever. we're trying to make money. And That's also, it. like, the other big consensus is that this concept of short selling is kind of shitty. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like you betting that his company's not going to do well is yeah, not you, like a cool thing to do. You I should get, be do betting. I, sorry. I was just going to say yeah. you should be betting on a company that you think is going to grow and like you believe it. And that was, that's what investing should be. You should be like, oh, I'm going to like plant my seed now yeah. because I, I believe in this founder or whatever. Not like, oh, they're about to shit the fucking bed. Let me like cash right. in on this. And that's one of the problems that is that all of these like complex models that are being done and like you know, leverage and all these words I don't understand <laughs> that people are able to use. Yeah. Make it to where, you know, they have an actual incentive that this company fails, which just yeah. feels like icky. Icky. Yeah. It and does. I, I, I don't know. Like, I guess it's, it's still free. Like you can make bets on what you want to make bets on, but it just feels weird. And also the other side is like, what really bothers me is that they made this bet that the company was going to fail. They try to influence it. Yeah. Like they released, PR and stuff like that in, in mm-hmm. an attempt to be like GameStop fucking sucks. Yeah. GameStop sucks. Yeah. Um, be that true or not, I in di- either way. However, then when they got called on it and then GameStop was not sucking or there was a situation in which people thought they had value and that's ultimately what the stock market is. Do people think something has value? Right. Yes right. or no. Buying the stock accordingly. Very simple yeah. in that sense. So that occurs and then they were all of a sudden pissed because you're investing like you won't get guaranteed outcomes so if something yeah. goes the way that you're not expecting like sorry buddy like you need you're gonna lose your money potentially right, right. you and don't you won't get a promise that that's gonna happen that's like fixing the market and the difference is now these um hedge funds are getting like bailed out when the regular people wouldn't have been bailed out. right so it's like what is how is that fair it's, it's not. And I'm like, and all of that, I don't even mind them necessarily getting bailed out. What I do mind is all of this is fine in my eyes. However, what's not fine is if they actually took GameStop off the trading. Yeah. That. That's sus. Is, <laughs> is sus. <laughs> them, in a, in a them word, if sus. they have, I, I don't love that it's an old boys club, but it's, I guess, not technically illegal. Maybe it should be smarter people than me handle it. You yeah. know what I mean? It does, I don't it know, should, getting loans, illegal. getting loans and stuff like that. Bah, you could technically loan me money if I was on a, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, I don't love it, Yeah, but it seems technically legal. Okay. That feels illegal. Yeah. Pulling it off a trading platform feels illegal. Feels really illegal. I don't know what it is. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a financial person. We're drinking from laughing Buddha mugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're clearly like yeah, we don't know. amateur hour over here. Right. But point being. We're learning. I want to fuck deep fucking fucking value. <laughs> you will fuck deep fucking No, value. I will not do that. <laughs> Sorry, Matthew. My boyfriend is like, please stop with that show. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this is not funny to me anymore. <laughs> this is um, a real person. <laughs> yeah, I really feel like you can't underestimate the value of like people coming together under circumstances that like they feel like. I don't know. Yeah. They, they feel like they can't, they feel like um, disenfranchised. And yeah. then they all kind yeah. of banded together and did something really kind of incredible. And people like the elites have a really big problem with that. And that's funny. I say, I say like the elites as though I don't live in New York and all these things, but I like, know. you know, I, but like the elites in the sense, like the hedge funds and stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it's very strange because it's so almost. Threatened. <sighs> yeah. So we'll see. And I mean, it's weird. Cause like, I feel like we, I mean, I know people who work at these funds and it's like, it's almost not yeah. even the individuals that, I mean, it partially is. It's hard to like understand where like the people who work there mm. kind of blend into like the groups, the entities as a whole. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. its own conversation at a later date on morals and shit, which isn't that funny. So like maybe, maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah. But, um, we will carry on with this if you like it. 
let us know. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we'll definitely wrap it up at least with like next week with some updates and, you know, see who's going to jail, who's not going to jail, if anyone's going to jail. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, it, I mean, I can't imagine this isn't going to continue to be dramatic and fun. It's definitely and juicy. Continue. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like, I don't know. I just feel like the old boys club's going to get their revenge in somehow, somehow, uh-huh. some way. And it's going to be really shady and people are going to have a lot to say about it. And it's going to be covered up in a really interesting way and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be skeptical I'm gonna keep my skeptical cap on me too um yeah so if you enjoyed today's episode special edition please uh send it to your friends your mom your clergy friends your your babysitters yeah whatever. hopefully we clarified some of this stuff because I know that like reading about it it can get like a little super hard a little reading hard. is tough it's like it's like a little bit of a spider web so I think you did a really good job like explaining it and hopefully I've been um, you guys can, you know, have a little bit more of a strong grasp on it after this. Cause I was like out to lunch, like literally <laughs> like on Monday. Yeah. I think you told me about this on Monday or Tuesday last yeah. time we recorded and I was like, Duh. And then, like now I actually have, I, I feel like I can tell someone about this and be confident. <laughs> yeah. At least the general idea of it and understand yeah. and just, you know, which is a good thing on. in general, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's literally the whole, the whole deal. Yeah. So join Wall Street Bets, um, share the podcast. Please like and subscribe us online. Uh, Follow us on Instagram at Risque Business News. Risque. Risque. Q-U-E. Yes. <laughs> like sexy, you know? Okay. Um, and um, see you. See you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.